Hello friends and welcome to Monster Monday. On today's episode, I am going to do something that I have never done before on the channel. I'm going to be telling you about a monster in my original world of Cacapulon. Okay everyone, the monster that I'm going to reveal today is called the Nidjiro. The history of this monster is tied to the history of the original world of Cacapulon, a world that I've been developing since 1998. And specifically it comes from a time period known as the Demon Wars, in which a very powerful coalition of bad, bad people were doing things that could nearly destroy the whole planet and specifically the continent of Arrakazine. The Nijiro were created, they were a hybrid, a magically created hybrid, between demons and beasts and men. And they were designed for a singular purpose. Imagine that they were like the terminators of this era. They were designed for the singular purpose of hunting down and killing the species known as the Ma Kuo. Now the Ma Kuo are a feline humanoid species in my original world, and they were part of, I guess, what you could simply put as the Good Coalition, and the Nijiro were specifically designed to hunt them down and kill them. These hybrid demon-human-bestial creatures had very interesting characteristics for specific reasons. Hey people, just wanted to interject for just a moment here to clarify something, because I forgot to mention it in the studio. I am using AI generated art just so that people can get a rough visual of what this monster is all about. And I have no intention of publishing with AI art. So when and if I am able to, God willing, publish my original world and all the thousands of ideas that I have, I will pay artists to do all of the original art. So if that's something that you were concerned about, that's my stance. Thank you. Please continue. Their hunting grounds was the homeland of the Ma Kuo, so deep forests, the Great Forest specifically, in the northern part of Arrakazin. So they had to be able to hunt at night and during the day. They had to be able to move through the forests effectively and also with stealth and they had to be stronger and bigger and just as fast as the very agile Ma Kuo. So their creator took elements of demons, elements of different beasts, specifically bears, and elements of the cunning of men, and combined these magically into this, what would be called an aberration, to create this hybrid. The Nijiro are fierce. They have dark vision, they can see at night, but they also have astute uh, visual and other olfactory senses, hearing. Basically all of the senses are heightened so that they can hunt down the, the Ma Kuo. Because the Ma Kuo are by culture a secretive uh, species and, and very agile themselves and good at sneaking around, um, the Nijiro had to be better in order to be more effective, in order to, to kill their prey. So they were strong, they were fast, they had heightened senses, they had dark vision. They also had terrifyingly sharp and strong, durable claws. Some of the hybrids had horns uh, or antlers. Some of them also had bone spurs, which allowed them to get even more damage off during hand-to-hand -hand combat. They had incredible jumping and climbing speed. They were just as effective running as they were climbing. And again, this goes back to the claws on their hands and feet, and also um, their physical build. They're bred for strength and agility. Now, usually with monsters, there's some downside, okay? But if you were looking at the stat block for this monster, they would have incredibly high strength, incredibly high dexterity, pretty high constitution. Um, their intelligence might not be the best. They are smart enough to follow orders, but not really that smart. So probably average intelligence. But their wisdom 
had to be pretty high because wisdom is the ability score most associated with perception and sensing things. So the Nijiro probably would have had pretty high wisdom. And their dump stat as a monster, as you probably have guessed by now, would have been charisma. Nijiro did not usually work um, alone though. They were often in hunting packs. Uh, because of the, the purpose of their existence, they were bred to hunt down the Makuo, they usually hunted in packs of six to eight. Now, if there were smaller size hunting groups like two to three Nijiro, it would typically be for the purpose of scouting out their prey first, and then they would call for reinforcements from a larger pack when they were ready to take on a big group of Makuo. Perhaps when we talk about motivations and, and alignment, you might be thinking, well, these are terrible, ferocious beasts. They must be some kind of chaotic. They really couldn't have been. Despite their bestial nature, they were meant to follow orders from other authorities. So they would have been more like lawful evil, though without the intelligence to necessarily disobey their orders and try to form their own um, power or their own faction. No, they were bred to be loyal specifically to the cults that served the ringleader of uh, all of the conflict during the Demon Wars, which was Nezrak, the Necromancer. So in most Monster Mondays, I describe how you can scale a monster to make it less powerful or less challenging or more power powerful or more challenging. I'm very disinclined to try to scale down with the Nijiro because they're intentionally created to be badasses but you could certainly upscale them. So remembering that they're magically created aberrations, they're hybrids, it is quite possible if you wanted to have like a super Nijiro who has four arms and thus more attacks, or uh, maybe it even has some kind of pseudo magical abilities to the extent like you would give a, a monk who could just, you know, have slow fall, for example or maybe just a monk's flurry of blows in hand-to-hand -hand combat. You could certainly make their claws do damage as if they were magical weapons in case you needed to overcome some kind of uh, resistance to that. So there are a lot of ways that you can upscale the Nidjiro, but I would say that you know if you were trying to use a few of these against a party, I would not throw them at a party that was below level eight because they would probably be wiped out. One of the flaws of the Nijiro is that they, they don't have a great armor class. Their armor class is just based on their extraordinary dexterity. So they basically have AC 15 if you're playing uh, like any of the modern versions of D&D. I suppose if you wanted to downscale them a little bit for a party that was mid-level, you could probably lower their armor class to like 12. But basically, they're, 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 they walk around in fur. They're naked. Like, they're, they don't have any armor, and they don't use armor. However, if you wanted to upscale them, you could have Nijiro who wear armor. I don't know how much of an impact that would have, but you could. The other thing that I've considered is, what if I had a Nijiro who was wielding a great weapon? And that's another thought. You know, it's the question of how many attacks you have in a round with their natural claws and bite versus how many attacks you have when they're wielding a weapon. My rough math is that if they have four attacks in a round with their claws and the bite, or three attacks, whatever you want to scale it to, that that's probably going to do more damage than one or two great weapon attacks. So take that as you will. The other thing, too, is that they could grapple. So if a group of them were attacking, they could grapple a single foe and the one who's holding the, the victim who's grappled would just be holding them and grappling them while the others would be shredding into that victim. The Nijiro are certainly evil creatures. They're, they're abominations, they're, they're aberrants. Um, they don't come from another plane of existence. They were created magically to serve their purpose and serve their dark masters. So where are the Nijiro in different time periods? Well. After the Demon Wars, a lot of the Nijiro were wiped out, but maybe not all of them. Maybe a lot of them went into hiding. Without the guidance and leadership of their Dark Masters, maybe some of them just went and you know, became beasts and, and hunted other animals and creatures and had their lairs. You could use them 
in almost any time period because eventually they did become their own distinct uh, species capable of reproducing. And maybe down the line, over centuries, they become less powerful or more powerful. But if you decide to use this creature, I plan to someday publish the Nijiro and all of my other um, original content. I, I invite you to, to try to maybe come up with um, ideas about how you would stat block the Nijiro. I have some stat blocks of my own that I kind of have made system agnostic so they could sort of work with any D20 based fantasy system. But certainly, as with all of my Monster Monday videos, you are welcome to manipulate the ideas, take some of my ideas, modify them for your own needs, or change the backstory on how they were created and use them in your own adventures to surprise your players and give them a challenge. I hope this little dip into my original world of Kakapulon and the Nidjiro has been informative and or entertaining. Stay tuned for more Monster Mondays. Thank you as always to all of you for liking and subscribing and supporting the channel. And if you'd like to take that extra step, you can join us on Patreon, where there are many tiers that will suit your budgetary needs. Until I see you again, happy gaming. Can you? Yes. There you go. Does my mustache look normal? Yeah. Well, hello and welcome to Bill Allen World. I am Wizzy the Wizard. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. Tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and watch other shows featuring Bill. He made me say that because he's a narcissist. Okay, bye.